As you'll see when you read his bio, Albanian ambassador to the UN, Ferit Hoxha, has incredibly impressive credentials, both academically and in terms of the breadth of his diplomatic service. But what his bio will not tell you is that he exudes, he exudes the kind of empathy and compassion that characterize the Albanian response to the Holocaust. Ambassador Hoxha was instrumental in developing with B'nai B'rith International the very first progr program at the United Nations on International Holocaust Remembrance Day devoted to the unique role that Albanians played in saving Jews during the Holocaust, both Albanians in Albania and Kosovo. We had asked for that particular event to happen 13 years before he made it happen. Ambassador. Thank you very much, Shirley, for those very nice words. I don't know whether I really deserve all that. When a British Zionist traveled to Albania in 1935 to see whether the country could serve as a Jewish national home, a government minister at that time told him, in Albania, religious intolerance is quite unknown. Hermann Bernstein, the American envoy to Albania during the pre-war period, wrote in 1934, Albania happens to be one of the rare lands in Europe today where religious prejudice and hate do not exist. Last September, Pope Francis chose Albania as his first destination to Europe to confirm, 80 years later, exactly the same thing and pay a high tribute to the nation as a model of interreligious harmony. In the yearly Department of State, US Department of State reports on religious freedom in the world, Albania stands resolutely as a firm rock of religious freedom and tolerance. I could go on with plenty other, of other examples and testimonials to confirm one important fact that has become an unchanged reality and was repeated many times this evening. Albania is a prominent, if not a unique case, of religious tolerance, harmony, and respect. Throughout its recorded history, Albania has never experienced religious conflict, a remarkable achievement in a continent whose history is marked if not defined by centuries of religious conflicts and wars. Yet there is another thing, another example. It was also mentioned, but I still need to say a few words. It's an example that I need to highlight and that illustrates at best the Albanian exception. During those terrible times of Holocaust, when almost everywhere in Europe, collaboration, submission, or just indifference where was, were leading a whole nation to its planned extinction. Albanians, Christians and Muslims alike, everywhere in the country opened their doors at the risk of their lives and saved Jews. Yes, this is now known. The result is simply remarkable. No Jew was ever handed to the Nazis. The whole community, those living in Albania or those who happened to travel through the land all survived and Albania had 10 times more Jews after the war than before. But there is one thing that is not often mentioned. We did not have Schindlers or Wallenbergs. We had an entire population everywhere in the country, including the rulers of the country of that time, who were equally dedicated to preserve humanity and save human lives. Albanians gave a solemn promise to Jews. They gave their Bessa, they kept it, and where, wherever there is an Albanian, there is Bessa. It may look distant, but it was just yesterday. We know what happens when we forget or when we are indifferent to what happens to others. We cannot export our reality in Albania, but we can prove that it is possible to live in harmony and respect. We Albanians, we belong to three different religions. We pray to God in different ways, but we have managed to preserve the unchanged mutual respect of our different each other. This is in striking contrast with the terrible realities in various parts of the world when millions are prosecuted and killed, not because of what they do, but just because whom they are. 
Every 27 January, we celebrate in Albania the International Holocaust Day. I have had the pleasure, and I thank you, Shirley, for mentioning that, to organize, among other activities, in 2014, together with Nye Breath, at the UN, a dedicated session on Holocaust Remembrance Day on the story of the Jews in Albania. Shirley Clois Dioguardi was one of the prominent speakers, and with her in-depth knowledge on the matter, based on more than two decades of dedicated work on the Albanians' rescue as director of the Albanian American Foundation, was instrumental to his success, and I thank you. <laughs> but this is not all. Shirley, together with the remarkable contribution of Joe Dioguardi, both as a member of the, Congre of the US Congress and in other capacities, with his unparalleled energy and devotion, and we know that, have uninterruptedly for the last 25 years in the board of the Albanian American Civic League, greatly contributed for peace and stability in the Southeast Europe, and we have the testimony tonight. We Albanians are there in the first row to testimony and prove it. A big warm and heartfelt thank you, a thank you of gratitude to both Shirley and Joe and all members of the Albanian American Civic League and Foundation for what they have done for Albanians everywhere in Albania and in the Balkans. I would like to conclude with one last note. Albania's main drive today is to strengthen democracy and develop its economy in its path towards European integration. We know what it takes and we work closely with our friends, partners and allies. But I need to say it clear and loud that in our path to freedom and our struggle to the future, we are lucky and proud to have one great friend, one important ally, our strategic partner, the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you.